Uh, I wonder if you could share a little bit more of, or other techniques or things that you found helpful either throughout that injury process or like now, I know you're into a few different um, practices that help you either on a, a personal level or an athlete level. Yeah, and I think a lot of what I had experienced before that moment was a lot of things were getting in my way, right? I don't know if it's mm. like in that moment I had this technique where now it brings me to a higher level of performance. I think it was, I was almost getting in my own way before, so good. right? And a lot of times that happens because of habitual patterns. Like you just, you're going through the day to day and it's difficult to evaluate where you're at. So for starters, reflecting on that, you know, trying to reflect on what could be getting in your way um, as an athlete or as a person. And I think I, especially during that, that initial injury process, there was a lot of like journaling or, or, you know, spending time evaluating. Cause I mean, I, I really had to reevaluate what my core values were because I thought that it was best in the world, you know, make Canada, bring Canada to the top, do all these different things, play until I'm 40 when those clearly aren't actually the core values that, that align with me as a person. Right. Um, so that sort of reflection journaling, um, evaluating core values is, is a huge piece. Like I think, and I, I was thinking about what our conversation was going to be about. And I, and I really wanted to make an emphasis of in the moment on the court or in the moment, even when you're reflecting on things that kind of surface thought or feeling or evaluation is such a fraction of what's actually going on. So if I'm in a game and I'm, let's say I go one for five on those targets and I have an emotional response to that, whether it be like disappointment or lack of grade, like drains my confidence or I get angry or I get more motivated because I want to hit or whatever it is. All of that is such a tiny part of what's actually going on in your mind, in your body, in your response to your environment. Um, and I think the more throughout that process, it was like, okay, how do I dig deeper into the layers of what's actually going on? Um, so initially that was kind of a bit of a tangent, but initially like you got to reflect, you got to journal, you got to try and figure out. Cause and actually the cool thing too, is when I'm evaluating those, those core values, let's say it kind of changes my, my frame of reference when considering high performance, you know, because if my number one core value is to be the best player in the world, to be the best team in the world, to win an Olympic gold medal. And not that those are bad things. Those can still be a part of my list, but if that's all that's there, then in moments when it's 24, 24, and you're about to have that opportunity, the weight of that is something that is much greater than the actual experience you're having is right. Like I think the amount of times that it's been 24 all or, or like, you know, the last 30 seconds in a basketball game or something like that, we've probably had so many instances like that, but they range in their intensity based on our expectation or based on how we evaluate our, our core values. And it was cool because going into this past Olympic qualifier, you know, my whole structure of these, these core values were different, but I went into the game against Cuba, which is, was kind of like the big important game. And I hadn't practiced. Like I left my, my pro team month and a bit before thinking, Oh, I'm going to be great come that time. But I really wasn't able to practice really wasn't able to jump. So I have no reason to believe that, you know, I should go be able to perform and, and be able to achieve this, this thing we want to achieve. Yet I was still able to find, you know, confidence in past experiences that, were completely different than what I was experiencing. I remember I had, I sat down for a coffee with our, with our team psych the night before the game. And a lot of what we talk about is, you know, using past experiences to your advantage, you know, like let's say you're going into a game and you're nervous. Well, you've played 500 international games. You should like, let's use that in some way. But I kind of asked him, I'm like, you know, I've never gone into a game, let alone an Olympic qualifier, let alone on Canadian soil where I haven't been able to practice. Like, what do I grasp onto if that's, if that's what you're going to like, right. If this is a technique, what if I don't have that? That's almost making me lose confidence if I'm trying to grab at things. And then he asked me, he's like, well, if you could take away anything from this weekend, aside from the fact of we win and we, and we go to the Olympics, if you could take away anything, what would it actually be? Like, what would you want to take away from this? And I was just kind of sitting there. I had thought about it before for sure too. Like I'm always in my head. So I was kind of able to, answer that question. And I was like, you know what, honestly, I'm just grateful that from two years ago, not being able to play all these lessons that have happened. Now we're in Canada, like it was in Vancouver. So we're in Canada, get a chance to play again. 
totally different experience than my past Olympic qualifier. I was like, I'm just grateful that I get to a actually play like that. I get that. I get the opportunity to go out there and do something, but also that, that my perspective now is so different than it was in, in 2016. And then we kind of came to terms with, okay, then put yourself in what you're feeling now in that sort of sense of gratitude and on court, when you don't have the confidence because you've never done this before, try to almost initiate that feeling as opposed to, oh, past experience being the thing that guides me. Let gratitude and let different core values be the thing that guide you. And then all of a sudden went out. It was a fi- it went in five set match, super long. Again, not being able to like practice for all that and going playing for like two and a half hours. My body was able to somehow handle it. And like, you know, I had a brace on. I wasn't really jumping over, but was still able to do it. My mind was still sharp throughout the game. It ended up happening. And I'm like, wow, that's again, another moment where if you would have asked me if that was kind of possible for me going into 2016, I'd be like, oh no, that's foolish. Like you need to be practicing. You need the reps. You need this, you need that. And I think because I was almost hardened in that moment, I wasn't able to see that there was these different opportunities, different techniques or tactics to use um, in game. So obviously the one end is you got to reflect back on past experiences and that's more something that you do off court that you do uh, very much isolated from your sport the next thing is that maybe in those moments find other things to uh, not reassure you but other things to grab in those moments that's beyond just your sport i mean back in the day it was always this this concept of rar that our team psych has and it's recognized accept and reconnect so if i'm super nervous before a game or even super amped before a game or something like that it would be to recognize that, to accept it, because if you're not going to accept it, it's, then it's going to only give it more power. And then to reconnect to your task at hand. So back in the day, it was always like I'd have a game plan in my head, right, that I, that I really was trying to execute. And it would always be reconnecting to that game plan. And that's super valuable, but I almost got to supplement this other force of gratitude or, you know, even just thankfulness or, or something, right, beyond that and attach it to it um, that allowed me to, to perform different. So those are kind of like, in the moment and this is sort of off court away from that but there's definitely something that needs to connect the two um, and i know you've talked a lot about this but but i've always enjoyed mindfulness practices and, and different meditative techniques um just so i could have a little bit better of a grasp on what's actually going in my mind on in my mind even breathing techniques and something like that because again like i said for me to be able to reflect or even in that moment have gratitude that's still very much on the surface. Like, there's still physiological things that are going on that I'm not in control of. There's still, you know, all of my past experiences are still with me kind of in those moments. So you, I need to find a way to be able to connect those two things. And I think, yeah, 100% like a mindfulness technique is, is beneficial. I also find like TM or transcendental meditation to be beneficial, especially as an athlete, because I find coming out of those sessions, I, I have more energy as opposed to less. Sometimes when I'll, I'll do a mindfulness uh, technique or something like that, I'll come out so relaxed that it almost pr- provokes anxiety because I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa I got to go to a game or something like that. Um, again, that's something that I can work on. Um, and then, yeah, like breathing techniques, <clears throat> um, I've found quite like fascinating or cold exposure or things like that to just watch your, how your physiology actually responds to these things because then it gives you some context when you're reflecting or or trying to evaluate or make changes it gives you actually a a place to start from so i'd say those are kind of the three pieces for me or it's like you know find not only techniques but you know a a deeper layer of tactical advantages in the game find a way to actually understand your mind and deeper process i know obviously i talked about mindfulness and breathing techniques and stuff and that's more the physiological side of it but also diving into your past experiences. I think we had mentioned this. I read a, uh, a book a while back about a behavioral psychologist that, that tries to take over the poker world, right? That tries to see if she can use her expertise in, in understanding poker. And a huge aspect of her reaching success was having to evaluate her own triggers or projections because that's what other players could use to their advantage, right? If it's, oh, every time you get somebody raises you or in volleyball, if every time... I set a guy and he gets blocked. I get anxious about setting that guy again. That's all of a sudden going to create a pattern that the opposing team can use against me. And I think the same thing goes in any sport. The same thing goes even in life, right? If if you're being 
driven, if your motivation or behavior is being driven by these anxieties or different triggers or your natural projections of these experiences, then all of a sudden it is taking a little bit of that free will away from you. It's taking that ability to choose how you want to choose. Um, so that's kind of the middle ground. And then the, the front or the foreground would be definitely like reflect journal, try and understand things, try and, I mean, I obviously read, I'm a kind of a nerd, but try and just understand as much as you can. So you can have context for when you look at those present experiences and that when you're in the game. 